there is an order to, you know, um, starting a business. I don't think I spent any money for three months. It was mainly just getting everything set up. I think one of the first triggers I did pull was um, you just go online and you register your LLC or your S Corp, whatever you're doing. And I'd recommend an LLC. It's, it's pretty standard for our style business. Didn't want to leave this business in a worse condition financially than I was, so LLC gives you a little bit of protection. Uh, we are a corporation now. We were an LLC, but by some crazy, we had a crazy accountant, and he like decided we should be a corporation. It was it's stupid. We should, LLC is good. I think that LLCs are pretty straightforward, and they also will protect you in the end. So you really need to get your LLC registered, your operating agreement. Um, set up and you, you don't really need an attorney for that but you probably should if you haven't done it before the employer's identification number EIN that was a little more of a hassle but it's all pretty straightforward it's all website driven you can you can just do that without your federal EIN you can't really do very much uh, you're not really gonna get bigger time vendors supplying to you uh, you're not going to be able to uh, hire employees I don't think you can even apply for your food license without one. Food code to me is pretty important, and I think a lot of people overlook that uh, because it's not the more glamorous side of running a coffee business. Getting the process of the food license started sooner rather than later will help you in the long run. The red tape can take an unbearable amount of time. Permitting is uh, a different length in terms of process in, say, North Carolina versus New York City. So you have to be patient with that. When I opened up the coffee shop, I not only had to have different licenses. This one is pretty easy. It's just a, a limited wholesale processor license. The cottage laws, you can make certain things and sell them to cons consumer to consumer, and then you don't need a license for that. But with a product that you sell to stores, you have to have a license. So along with the label, um, the labeling is different. Using the cottage law, you don't have to do all this, but you do have to write on each individual label that this is made it, not made in a commercial kitchen and stuff. You have to let people know, but you can't sell those things in stores, just direct to consumer. I think people make the mistake of seeing the health department their enemy versus their support system. Lean into them for advice versus like doing something um, and then asking uh, for them to come check it out. Um, you could get shut down for a couple days while they figure out whether they liked what you did or not, but if you had involved them in the process from the get-go, it, it'd be a lot less painful. Um, and also they could help you find equipment for the things you're trying to do. Your budget is going to dictate to you exactly what sort of building you can buy or rent. It's definitely having street level visibility is super important in choosing a place. It's also going to be a little bit more expensive, but that's uh, something you should work into your budget most definitely. If you can get an A location, get it because another thing it does is it it pretty much safeguards you against competition let's say you take a C location and you build an awesome business somebody comes in and takes the A location they're gonna siphon away a ton of your traffic because of it's just easier to get to it's a better location it's more convenient and there's not a thing you can do you can't you can't combat that with advertising you can't cut prices it's not why people go to cafes we look at locations that have um, great visibility, um, also the ability for people to get to the location. So either they, ha they have a lot of parking or there's public transit that brings them there. We also look at the surrounding tenants. Uh, we would like tenants, um, other businesses that are high volume, high traffic. So restaurants, hair salons, stuff like that. Uh, we're also looking at very specific parameters for the interior for architectural purposes. My biggest tip uh, is to find a landlord who's willing to start 
renting you the building the day you actually open your uh, business to customers um, instead of starting the lease when you are renovating the building. Uh, that could be the difference of like three or four months and could save you thousands of dollars. Signing the lease is a real moment. <laughs> it's like, okay, when you do that, you've just committed to a personal liability for at least five years, if not more. Um, so you better have your, your financing committed. They say, yeah, we're ready to go. You'd, you'd kind of want to have already talked to a contractor and visited the space, got a, a really good estimate, bid. You want a bid, signed bid if possible. There can be water connection fees, like maybe the building isn't rated for what you want to do or the electrical system is not rated for the amount of power you're gonna need. You need to know all that, so. And the, like, getting everything up to code was huge, you know? Right. Like, I mean, when you take a, a building that doesn't have floor drains, you have to, like, chop the floor out and put floor drains in and figure out that whole thing. I'm, I'm good at that now. Yeah. You know, I know who to call. <laughs> you got, your list of right. contacts has gotta be long. So hiring and training staff, super important. Everything is. If you're gonna go into business, not one thing, there's not one thing that's unimportant. So location, 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 we talked about that. Make sure you're funded right. So you get to the point, you know, four weeks before you're gonna open, you need some staff. It, it'd be a travesty if you didn't hire the best people and train them right. I, I put a number on it once. It, it's about $10,000 if you make a mistake hiring a manager. For a regular barista, it's about a $2,000 mistake. So it's really super important that you interview right. And then um, training, same thing. You know, If you've hired the right person, the training's gonna be a lot easier and they're gonna get it and they're gonna flourish. All the responsibilities and tasks that have to be done in the store can be trained. But what you can't train is someone's personality. So we really talk about how you're hiring that personality. Uh, you want someone to be friendly and outgoing and engaging, and you can't turn a shy, you know, introverted person to be that person that talks about your coffee and knowledgeable about your tea and, and uh, feeling passionate about certain products. So. Uh, we really talk about hiring the personality, and then we can train, every franchisee can train them on all the different tasks that have to be done in the store. You know, that, that you can go back to the question you asked earlier, do you regret anything? Yeah, I regret that we didn't train people at all. Like, we were just like, I would be like, oh, you're cool. Like, I would just hire people if they could breathe, basically. I'm the worst at hiring. Like, I'm just like, oh my God, you seem so cool, let's go. And then the development of our staff, too, you know. Make, create jobs that are so good that people are just like, damn, I love working at Rooster Roast. I want to get a job at Rooster Roast. It's hard to get a job at Rooster Roast. I mean, that's, that's another huge thing. Like, be, become the place that people want to work. If you've set up a culture that's friendly, fun, honest, trustworthy, expectations are in line, you know, with, with what people would reasonably assume, you treat them well. Um, People are gonna to wanna to work here, and that keeps our costs lower and sales up. Customers are happier. Did I make it sound important enough? I would just say it's really hard to know as you move towards opening a coffee house, what steps to take next. You need your whole personnel package ready. You need your product procedures ready. You need to be in touch with your vendors. You need to be testing recipes. I mean, there's so much work to be done, so you don't wanna, you don't wanna dwaddle away your time, and all of a sudden the store's gonna open in two weeks. I think I remember the very first day that we opened, we were, uh, you know, getting everything ready, and we ordered a ton of product, and we expected that the day we opened, there'd be lots of people coming into the cafe, and we all just stood there. <laughs> there was nobody there. And the first people to come in were the guys who owned the building. And there was a sense of a reality check. Uh-oh, you know, we, we definitely need to do more. <laughs> the first 
launch, it was like Art Hop, which is a popular event here. So that was kind of my official test. I sold there, I remember selling 10 bottles, which was $100, and I was like, oh man, there might be something to this, you know? <laughs> but I was giving out samples and doing a demo, so that was kind of it. But the next day was like the big, official launch where my son just graduated he was there we opened the door to the car the first um case fell out and a couple broke and i was like my god because i like signs and i was like that's not a good sign but we're just gonna do it anyway that makes sense you know the universe has jokes so let's just do it and um i don't remember i made I, I probably made a couple hundred dollars and i know my mind was blown at that time i remember giving my son like ten dollars ten dollars after the market and he was like what's this for and i'm like I, right just here opening day i would say just any cafe i've ever opened is similar but i'll tell you about the one here it was December 27th, it was really cold. Um, we got here, I'd say 20 minutes after we opened the door, somebody came in, ordered a coffee, and we're like, your dollar's going on the wall. Can you sign it? And she's like, oh, I'm the first customer, when'd you open? This morning. And then it just starts going. So I, I think be, be really open about what you're doing. Invite people in during construction. Um, you know, do your do some preliminary um, social media about the the progress. You know, the more you tell people what you're doing, uh, the better, because you're you're letting them get involved.